Hello! With all the news recently about Southern trains and all the Farago going on there, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about trains. And did you hear that they're making a new locomotive fuel additive out of grapes in France? They're calling it Vin Diesel. The east and west coast of North America was linked with the railway network on May the 10th, 1866, by uniting the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific Railroads. This 3,000 mile long railroad enabled people to travel from New York to California in mere days instead of weeks and months. In 1869, Chinese and Irish labourers working on the Central Pacific Railway managed to lay down 10 miles of tracks in just one day. This accomplishment has not been matched even in modern times. There was once a large two-engine train crossing America. After they'd gone some distance, one of the engines broke down. No problem, the engineer thought, and carried on the train at half power. Further on down the line, the second engine broke down and the train slowed to a dead stop. The engineer decided he should inform the passengers about why the train had stopped and made the following announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that both the engines have failed and we will be stuck here for some time. The good news is that you decided to take the train and not fly. 70% of all train journeys in England either start or finish in London. My local railway company has a safety problem. It tried to cover its tracks. The longest route for one train can be made between Vo Moscow and Vladivostok on Trans-Siberian Express Railway and that's just over 9,000 kilometres long. The longest single uninterrupted train journey, including transfers, starts from the Portuguese coast and goes not just into China, but all the way to southern Vietnam, a distance of 17,000 kilometres, about 10,500 miles. It would take a minimum of 327 hours, including time zone changes. That's over 13 and a half days. An engineer died once and went to heaven. On arrival, he was greeted and shown the way to a fabulous railway yard. They had every type of locomotive made, all in pristine condition. They even had a lounge where he ran into many of his old friends. They sat around drinking coffee and telling lies to each other. After a couple of days, he noticed that no trains ever left the yard. He asked a fellow engineer about this, and he was told no train company manager has ever made it this far. The longest stretch of perfectly straight railway is located in Australia, of course, 478 kilometres long, straight through the desert. The heaviest ever train recorded weighed 95,000 tonnes, and this freight train from Australia was 7.3 kilometres long and had the weight of 27,000 fully grown elephants. The United States embraced four time zones only after trains enabled fast travel across the continent, much like the UK standardised an all-UK time zone. Once trains connected places so fast it made timetabling far too difficult to have different time zones for Bristol and London. The current speed record for trains is held by the French TGV bullet train. It reached the speed of 584 kilometres per hour and then had to brake for 16 kilometres before it managed to stop. I don't want to make puns about monorails, because, but they always make for decent one-liners. The first commercial steam train, Stevenson's Rocket, managed to reach the speed of 96 kilometres per hour in 1830. Most London commuters nowadays can only dream of such speeds. I'm going to finish up with a few London Underground announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, upon departing the train, may I remind you to take your rubbish with you. Despite the fact that you are in something that is metal, fairly round, filthy and smells, this is a tube train and not a wheelie bin. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologise for the delay to your service. I know you're all dying to get home, unless of course you happen to be married to my ex-wife, in which case you'll want to cross over to the westbound and go in the opposite direction. Beggars are operating on this train. Please do not encourage these professional beggars. If you have any spare change, please give it to a registered charity, or failing that, to me. Hello, this is the captain of your Uxbridge train speaking, and we will be departing shortly. Please note that we will be cruising at an altitude of approximately zero feet, and our scheduled arrival time in Uxbridge is 11.15pm. The temperature in Uxbridge is a cool 10 degrees Celsius, and Uxbridge is in the same time zone as Aldgate, so there's no need to adjust your watches. We are taking the scenic route to Barking on the district line. We will be stopping at all stations to Barking, with the exception of Cannon Street. This train does not stop there on Saturdays due to total lack of interest. 
this is Paddington Station. Please leave your valuables on the train and I will collect them at the end of my shift. That's all for this week. See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>